So, now let us deal with the third aspect uh, that is in organisms and population, third aspect is population interactions. So you can say no organism on this earth is totally independent. It has to depend on other like biotic components are influenced by abiotic and uh, abiotic things are influenced by biotic. So if you take two species, it may be beneficial to both then we call it mutualism. Then it is detrimental or harmful to both then we call it competition. But some students get confused here because in competition sometimes it appears one is benefited. But overall the effect of competition is negative to both. Predation, the predator is benefited, prey is harmed. And parasitism, host is benefited, sorry. Parasite is benefited, host is harmed. Then commensalism, host is not affected and commensal is benefited plus zero. Amensalism here minus zero interaction. Right. Now let us go to the details. So in this uh, predation, in nature everything appears from one uh, narrow thinking point we think a predation is danger or harmful not like that there is a control so to control one organism nature has uh, allowed the development of other organism that is a beauty of nature now predation what is the importance of predation to the ecosystem from this let us just quickly look into these points it is a conduit it is a route for energy flow so there will be different channels for energy flow one after other and first uh, from plants let us say herbivores consume and herbivores are eaten by carnivores uh, then here what we get doubt is herbivore should be called predator or not in general sense we don't call herbivore as a predator but from ecology point of view you should treat even that as a predator because it is predating on plants and plants the problem is more problem they cannot escape they cannot move easily so they are also uh, getting affected now so one energy flow it is forming a conduit for energy flow right second thing prey populations are kept under control there may be uh, one variety of plant enormously grows, it does not allow growth of other plants also. Or one a herbivore enormously increases, that may be harmful for plant. So this herbivore is kept under control by its own carnivore. Then biological control, that is a, a beautiful thing. Prickly pear cactus, uh, when it entered into Australia way back in 1920s etc. At that time there is an increase in this cactus then they were worried how to control this. But there are natural enemies uh, present uh, in their own areas not in new areas They're like moths. When a cactus feeding moth was introduced it was dramatically controlled. Then uh, even though it is not useful Many times some um, human beings harm others, but other animals or other organisms are not like that. They are very intelligent, prudent. Prudent means practical, you can say. They don't kill their prey organisms. So that is an intelligent thing there. Then prey organisms, what they are doing, they are not able to escape, but they are able to show various adaptations. Cryptically colored, they are trying to match with their background. There are large number of mimicry artists on this earth. There is a leaf insect matching with the leaf. And uh, you know, chameleon changes color very fastly. Many frogs, uh, they also uh, change color. Right. 
then why thorns are present in plants like acacia and cactus to avoid predation by herbivores then cardiac glycosides uh, are accumulated by certain plants why by consuming this uh, calotropis plant uh, then what will happen the health of the herbivore is influenced it is getting damaged then some organisms like monarch butterfly in their uh, caterpillar stage uh, they consume poisonous weeds so that they are not eaten by their predators so see how much intelligence is present in organisms there are various chemicals accumulated like uh, for example caffeine caffeine opium strychnine then opium or you can say to nicotine present in tobacco these are all produced and not for providing uh, the economic uh, crops for human beings they are meant for uh, escaping from their natural predators insects avoid them now competition as we have seen competition is negative negative now flamingos and fishers are two unrelated forms but competing for zooplankton then one more concept is interference competition <coughs> suppose there is a competitor it is not doing well if that competitor is uh, not uh, actually directly responsible decrease in food but just because it is present it is not doing well so it was observed by cornell and others competition release when one of the competitor was released uh, the other one is doing well for example balanus when balanus uh, chatamalus both are there you remove balanus one barnacle chatamalus number will increase then competitive exclusion a scientist by name goss and uh, here you can quote best example darwin was attracted towards uh, which organisms in galapagos islands finch birds another thing is large sized tortoises present here abingdon tortoise this abingdon tortoise became extinct when man introduced goat because voracious eater of food is goat so because of this competition it cannot survive earlier there was not such competition so it is existing but when resources are plenty coexistence is possible and it was suggested by mac arthur so mac arthur what he suggested coexistence right so it was it uh, coexistence was studied in some birds like warblers they are called warblers so one is going in the morning time other one is going in the evening time like that uh, they are changing their timings then parasitism like uh, ticks uh, present on various domestic animals copepods found on the fishes then cuckoo or quail it does not build its nest and shows uh, parasitism on crow there are many endoparasites and ectoparasites you know many helminth parasites like fasciol hepatica is sheep liver fluke and uh, uh, human liver fluke has two intermediate host and endoparasites lose their locomotory organs sense organs are reduced like that they show various changes in particular endoparasites undergo greater changes now commensalism means what it is plus zero beneficial to one this neutral to other so some plants uh, living as epiphytes on mango then cattle agrid is a bird living on the body of cattle right cattle is uh, not directly benefited but the bird is feeding on insects moved by the cattle then barnacles are crustaceans living on the body of whale that is mammal barnacles are getting benefited sea anemones and clownfish sea anemones with their stinging cells 
protect uh, the clownfish from the enemies. Now, mutualism. So the plus plus interaction is known as a mutualism, right? Plus plus interaction is called mutualism. Likens is a association. Likens is a. Uh, it appears a totally different form because algae and fungi both together associated to form lichens. Then mycorrhiza are formed near the roots of many plants. Association with the fungal members, they absorb uh, nutrients and they get nourishment. And large number of orchid plants, so they show variety of diversity in their flowers. They try to attract uh, uh, different varieties of uh, bees and bumblebees. So, we are uh, sometimes get, uh, getting surprised, uh, not only animals are showing uh, mimicry, but this plant uh, uh, attracts uh, one variety of insects for its cross-pollination. Thus, uh, we can also say coevolution many times. But uh, here, one more last point, uh, amensalism. So, what is meant by amensalism? It is amensalism is right. So amensalism, if you take uh, production of uh, uh, what is that antibiotic, production of an uh, antibiotic. Amensalism means zero minus. Even though it does not get any direct benefit. It is causing harm. That will be surprising. Antibiotics produced by fungus. Uh, for example, penicillin plant, uh, Penicillium notatum fungus produces penicillin, a drug, popularly known as wonder drug, which kills or inhibits the growth of bacteria. So, why? means it is antibiosis we say. Like that some plants inhibit growth of another variety of plants. So that is not getting direct benefit. So it is called amensalism. So try to visualize different examples in this concept like how uh, the cut chewing or ruminant mammals are able to digest even though they cannot digest cellulose they are eating on plants. So, what is the thing? Then, male mosquito or female mosquito, which is feeding on blood, which is feeding on uh, plant juices, like that. So, because there are doubts raised by others in some places, whether to treat uh, uh, technically mosquito as a parasite or not, right? So, these are the various things you have to consider, but try to practice more bits on this because when you read it is very a small thing but when you go on doing different questions then you get different ideas.